we're going to check to see if this shaft is bent in the lathe. But first, we're going to have to put it between centers. The first part we're going to put it on is here, not here, because the first one's actually machined, and the second one's not going to be actually round. And because we're doing this on the lathe, we're going to actually have to machine a part that it's going to spin on, on the 60 degree point that we pointed out earlier. We're not actually going to be spinning it in the head of the chuck after we machine this, we're going to be spinning it on the nub that we're going to make. The whole idea for this video came up because a friend of mine is rebuilding his transmission and he was told on a forum that you can't check to see if the shaft is straight in the lathe. And <laughs> I kind of laughed at this and thought it was a little bit incorrect. You can if you do it in a certain manner. Now, I mean, the dial indicator that I'm using isn't the most precise dial indicator, but really, we're just looking for gross runout anyways. The physics behind this is, we're going to spin it on centers, and we got to make sure that the centers are accurate, and that they're not kind of wobbling around in both sides of the plane. Now, one of the things that <laughs> most of the machinists out there are going to laugh is, is when you're working on the back side, you got to make sure that you're running it in the right, <laughs> right direction. I'm pretty sure every machinist out there has done that once or twice. Either way, I digress. We're going to machine this part off, and we're going to hit it really hard and take a lot of material off quick. And then, when we're done after this, we're going to come back and we're going to take a high-speed, light pass on it. Just so we can get a good surface finish on it, and we can make sure we got any dirt or grime or burrs aren't going to interfere with our round. Now that we have this all machined up, let's throw our live center in the end. A dead center with a carbide tip would be a lot better because then we won't be compounding some of our air of the bearing running around. But really, like I said, we're just checking for gross runout on this. And I don't suspect there's going to be any, but we'll go over that as we do it. I'm going to put just enough tension on this that it's not going to spin the head of the lathe, but it's going to spin in the lathe. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on there. And keep in mind, I made sure that both sides were super clean. Now, I'm going to spin it on both ends that it actually pivots on and make sure that there's zero run out on this. This is super important because if there's run out on it when you're spinning it on either end, you're going to have a compounded air and you're going to think you have a, well, a bent shaft. I didn't find any on the right side and <laughs> spoiler alert, there won't be any on the right side either. The dial indicator that I'm using here is accurate up to a thousandth of an inch. You could probably go with a more precise measuring tool as well depending upon the speed of the shaft and how precise you want to go. Keep in mind, when you grab the shaft and move it, you're also going to be moving the shaft a little bit on its axis as well, kind of pushing left and right, so you have to take this into account. Let's give it a shake here and a tap and kind of see. You'll kind of see it move, you probably can't see it, you'll probably see it move probably about a quarter of a thou, but this isn't really too much to be worried about because I know that I'm moving it like that. Now, it's just a matter of going down every ground bearing surface and checking them. Now, there are other round surfaces on there, but to be honest, all of the silver ones that bearings fit on are gonna be precision ground. And the ones that aren't precision ground, well, yeah, you guessed it, they're not gonna be precision. So don't bother looking at those. So one thing that you'd be looking for here if you did have a bend shaft is you'd start seeing a lot more run out as you got closer to the bend. Say, for example, which we don't have on this one here, if it was bent on this bearing or the next one, you'd actually see it kind of moving up and down two or three thou, and it would lead me to believe that that's where the bend would be close to. Lucky for us, this is well within spec, and we're not overly too concerned about what we're seeing here. And if we were to see a bend, this would actually be the bearing that we'd see the bend on, because this is the smallest part of the shaft. Also, if I didn't mention it as well, you also have to make sure your dial indicator is perpendicular to the shaft and to the center of axis. 